Have you ever wondered what your true north is? That's what we'll talk about today. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in a dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. Dante, the Divine Comedy. Today we're going to talk about the book, Discover Your True North, Become an Authentic Leader, by Bill George. This topic interested me primarily because I'm always intrigued by people who know the innate way to go. They know in any given situation where their compass is pointed. Even if a situation is brand new, fraught with all sorts of terrible landmines, they know which direction they should go. And he said that when we have our true north figured out, all the churn of the world, everything that happens to us, even if we're a leader or not a leader, it's going to help us stay on track. And if we can get to that place where our true north is known, he says that, quote, it is your internal compass unique to you that represents who you are at the deepest level. He brings up William James, who's the father of modern psychology, and he said, I have often thought that the best way to define man's character would be to seek out a particular mental or moral attitude in which he felt himself most deeply and intensely active and alive. At such moments, there is a voice inside which speaks, this is the real me. And so the author wonders, has there ever been a time where you felt like this is the real you? And that a lot of leaders will go about it the wrong way. They go through all the trappings of being a leader, but it's not really who they are. You think about all the crisis, the Enrons of the world. We just had the FTX scandal. And you wonder, are those people even leaders at all? Or did they hang their star on some sort of rocketing thing? They never had a true north to them. They never had the thing that made them them. And so when they got thrown around by a fast expanding business, the opportunity to commit crimes or to rip people off so that their lives could be better, they took it because they had no true north. I said this before when it came that the hardest person you're ever going to have to convince is yourself. Well, he says the hardest person you're ever going to have to lead is yourself because you're the one who's going to have to fight whatever is going inside of you, whatever battles are going inside of you, and follow your true north. He says over time, some of these true north of a good leader changed quite a bit. It used to be that you should have been charismatic self-interested, short-term thinkers who had a very hierarchical leadership inside your own business. We're going to talk about this inside and outside of business, but now modern leaders are purpose-driven. They have a big vision. They look at the institution's best interest, and they're thinking long-term. I wonder how much of that is really true, because businesses seem in general to be rewarded for short-term thinking. I'm going to jump on that next bandwagon. I'm going to take that next trendy thing and go with it instead of really thinking long-term. I hope what he's saying is true, but I'm not sure about that. He said that in the end, we have to be responsible for our own development. You know, it's nice when we have mentors and we look to other people to help us in our growing as a leader, but instead we're going to have to grow ourselves to be leaders. He says that people who are leaders are not born to be leaders, but they grow themselves into being leaders. And they get there by understanding their own life story. When you understand what brought you to this point, the difficulties you had, the struggles you overcame, that's when you're really going to come across and find your real leadership story. And that made me think a little bit. You know, I mentioned before I came from a very chaotic upbringing I didn't have a lot of resources available to me. And so I think the message to me when thinking about my leadership style now is that I had to get there on my own. I had to find my own way. I had to use my resources and creativity and ability to learn things so that I could keep learning 
keep growing and keep going about it. So a lot of my leadership has to do with that struggle of myself and that struggle to really overcome the problems I had and not fall into mistakes I also previously made. When he says, we're able to reframe our story into the thing that really burns inside of us and understand our past, understand where we're at now, and also look then with our eyes towards the future, that's when we're going to know that we will be able to be a true leader and we'll know what our true north is too. But the problem is with leadership is that we think it's a one-way rocket ship, but it's bouncy. We build certain characteristics and then we have something happen to us. We fight through that issue and we step up to lead. Then we have this horrible thing happen to us and then we're brought back down again. We keep in this very up and down frame, but hopefully going up in general so that we become the leader that we are capable of being. And then when things go wrong, we have that strength and that we have that ability to bring out all the things that we had as children, we had as young adults, all those visions that we had, and then refine the lessons of our lives as now being older people than we were when we were children, who are willing now to take all the risks, be courageous, and focus on the things that are really important. If we dwell on all the negative things in our lives, if we get overwhelmed by all our fears in our lives, we will go nowhere and just live a fearful life. That's a way of taking the message of our youth and letting it destroy us and learning the lessons that were meant to be learned through them. So he challenges us to look at the patterns in our life and look at the people, the things that happened that shaped us in our early life. And what's the story? What's the message? What were those times where you really fought through something and came out the other side? And now when you think about it, it was a fantastic experience, despite the fact that maybe it was stressful. So by taking that reframe on our earlier lives, on the lessons that we learned, and then taking that mature view of it so that we can actually then alter that. So for example, for me, like I said, I learned in my life that I could get through anything. I could research through anything. I could somehow figure a way to make it work. But what's the problem with my message? I, 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 I. There's no community there. And I know this is a weakness with me that I tend to think of all the things I can do. Rarely do I think about people in my life who could help me get there, asking for help, asking people if they want to join me in something. And that has always been a blind side for me. So I will never be that true North leader while I don't work on the things I learned and make them improved. He said that's how we can actually become authentic leaders. Some ways he said that people fail in becoming authentic true North people or becoming authentic leaders is that you can lose touch with reality, he says, that we no longer are grounded in the real world anymore. And you can see that. I don't know if you've ever talked to someone who's high up maybe in your company or someone who became very important. And I've even listened to podcasts where they talk about life and what it is to live life. And you realize that they have no idea how the regular middle of the road human being works anymore. They are so well out there, they have lost touch with reality. It says that sometimes people can get overwhelmed with feeling like they're failing. Maybe they can get broken in by that desire for success, you know, where they just get greedy, maybe not for money, but for power, or they just can't live without that next success. He says that it's also lonely for to be leaders. And so sometimes people fail because they're just living in a castle of their own mind, that they are no longer in touch with a community anymore. So he said that if you feel like you're losing track of your true northness with some of these shortcomings or failures, it's time to tackle them. He says sometimes there are people who are imposters 
who just lack self-awareness. They don't even know what's behind them anymore. Maybe they got promoted and it was before their time. They were never a good leader. They were never able to inspire other people. And it's because they maybe didn't go through that self-awareness, that examination of who they were as a younger person, how they got to where they are. And now they feel like they don't deserve what they have. He says there's rationalizers who basically give up on their values. They no longer stick to the things that were important to them because they'll say, well, I know I told myself I would never lie to a customer, but you know what? In this case, it was really important that I tell them something that the company wants me to tell them. Mm, Now you've merged away from the very values you have. He says there's glory seekers who just want to get fame. They just want to get praised by other people. And then there are loners who just don't build that community around them with the social structure, with the friends, with the people who can help them reach that next level. And then the last one, he says, are the shooting stars who just are off like a rocket. Like I said, maybe they got promoted ahead of their time. They're a shooting star in the company and everyone's thinking, wow, that person's amazing. Last week they worked in the mailroom and now they're the CEO. But did they deserve the thing they got? Or did they get there through an honest method? If you don't have that ability to ground yourself as a leader and have that true north, you're just going to fall astray. I've seen many people in my life who've been promoted to places where they probably didn't do the work to get there. They weren't the right fit, but there was something that a different leader saw in them that made that other leader want to promote them, want to pull them up, and they weren't ready for it. So the idea of a leader is that you're not there to just be impressive. You're not there to just sort of show everyone how it's done. It's the real role of a leader is Not to get people to follow him, he says, but empower other people to lead. Can you make leaders out of other people? And I think that that last one comes in that shooting star. People who are shooting stars are afraid of that because they don't want someone to compete with them. They want to be the person everyone looks up to and protect their small kingdom by not letting anyone else up there. But if you're not trying to inspire other people to do their best, it's a claim against your own leadership. He said that there's always a time where there's a crucible, which means it's a painful point, a struggle, a difficult time. Maybe that leader is let go from the company. Maybe the company is going through a bad time. It's going to be those crucible moments that will cause you to either stand up as a better leader or will make you crumple make you fall to the ground because you didn't have your true north leading you in the right direction. It doesn't mean that when you have your true north, when you have that inner core, you're not going to have bad things happen to you. Of course you're going to. The question is, what are you going to do then? Are you going to use your experiences, your strengths, your inner compass to help you and the people around you get out of it? Or are you going to falter and crumple to the ground and not have anything to stand up on. He says that self-awareness will help us take in feedback, become better because of introspection and looking at the things we're good at and the things we're not so good at. He says values are going to be deeply held. There are going to be principles in our lives. He says that our support team can be family and friends and all the people that are with us so that we can um, move ahead. He says it's important to know that we are constantly evolving, that we don't stay in the same spot. And the question is, are we evolving towards a better being or a worse being? Are we adapting or are we succumbing to the thing that is coming after us? He said that there's IQ, which is intelligence, but then there's EQ, which is emotional intelligence. And having emotional intelligence will help us with other people and help us know ourselves better. He gives the example of the onion, that we're an onion to be peeled away, which always makes me think of Shrek. He says, ogres are like onions. 
Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. Get it? We both have layers. But it's true for people, too. We have multiple layers. We have what we wear. We have our strengths and weaknesses. We have our values. We have our desires and our wants. We have our leadership styles. But once we peel away all the different layers, we eventually get to our authentic self. That we're not putting out what he calls layers of protection, but we are liberating the best possible person we can be. He says that we have to think about values, what those are for us, whether it's helping people, it's devoting ourselves to family, it's making the world a better place. You know, for me, my faith is an important value that I have that goes through everything I do. And so then the question is, when we have values, those also will give us ethical boundaries and the principles we have for leadership. He says that, you know, it's basically how we're going to treat other people. It's things that we won't do because we've crossed an ethical boundary. Those are limits on our behavior that we just won't do. He says there's two things. And in psychology, this is a big topic of conversation. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. But intrinsic versus extrinsic motivations. An intrinsic one is going to be growth, doing better, doing good for the world, helping other people, and making a difference in the lives of the people around us. Extrinsic motivations are going to be like having a fancy title, getting recognition from our peers, social status, maybe getting a lot of money or having a lot of things. And we tend to focus on extrinsic motivations in our society. We don't think about when we see that person become a famous actor, gosh, I wonder what's going on in the inside of them. We think, look at that house, look at that car, look at their boat. It's all fancy. They also got a cottage on the south of France. What an amazing life they're living. But what we don't know and we don't focus on is that intrinsic motivation that's going on inside of them. And he said that the intrinsic motivations are going to make up our true north. We're also going to have capabilities. We're going to have strengths and weaknesses, things that we're good at and things that we're not particularly good at. Of course, we have to improve some of the things that we're not good at. But a key to our success is actually strengthening the things that we're great at and focusing in on those. So he calls those capabilities. We have now our motivations, intrinsic versus extrinsic, and we have strengths and weaknesses. And when we put our motivations together with our strengths and weaknesses, then we have something really potent. I feel that that's where this podcast has been for me. Being an extrovert, I love talking. I'm sitting in a room by myself, waving my arms and talking to you. But I love learning new things. I love improving myself. I love finding out new ideas to make my life better. And hopefully, this is something that's a strength to me. When those come together, I feel now like I found my sweet spot. So if you can do that, if you can find your sweet spot, it'll make your life great. And it'll help you on your true north because now you know the thing that really gives you purpose in life. He says next we need a great team. Those might be family, friends, partners in life, business people that we trust that have our backs and can give us honest feedback. Once we have that, then we can integrate everything in into the same being. Our personal life, our family, friends, and our work life all together into this integrated life. Have you met people that are not integrated? Maybe they're horrible people at work and then they go home and they're just loving people to their families. Or maybe they're great at Sunday at church and then they go to work and they're little monsters. That's not an integrated life. Being the same person all the time is going to give you happiness. It's going to make you a better person. And it's going to help you figure out what really matters. So try to figure out how to stop being multiple people and find out how to become one person all the time. He gives some examples of the I leader versus the we leader. And we leaders are people who look to help other people, build fantastic teams, are humble, 
and try to inspire everyone around them. That's an important method, I think. You can always see the people at work who are I leaders, and it's all about them, and it's all about their work, and it's all about their things. But when you meet someone who is that true we leader, you appreciate them so much more. And so when you can align yourself to your purpose, your motivations, your values, that true self you have, you can build into that unique, empowering moment you have to be a leader. It will make you authentic because people know that you live the life you look like you're trying to lead, that you're good to people all the time. You listen to people, learn from people, and you're able to treat other people as equals. When you are the kind of leader whose true north is not afraid of being challenged, not afraid of being taken on by other people, that's when you're really going to start glowing, I think, as a leader, because now you're that single solitary human being who can take on whatever challenges come your way. He says that there are leadership styles. We talked a few episodes ago about your work styles, but it's something like some people are very direct and are very rule-based. There are other people who are great at engaging other people and sharing values and purpose. There are other leaders who are fantastic coaches. There are some leaders who are great at building consensus and building a team-like environment. And there are people who are great to bond with and, and that you feel like you're on the same page with. And then there are some leaders that are experts. They're competent. They're very good at what they do. And I've had the pleasure, I think, of being around every one of these types of leaders. And not any one of them is bad, but sometimes they're the wrong leader at the wrong time. You know, for example, I saw someone who was struggling to be a leader because he wasn't coming up with new ideas. But you know what he was great at? Which was he was great at building a team that all worked cohesively. But I think that at the point, that's not what they were looking for. They needed ideas. So sometimes it's the right type of leadership style in the right place and being that kind of leader. If you know what you are and you have your true north set in you, you'll know the kind of leader you are. And maybe you're a great leader, but you're not a great leader in this spot at this time, or you're exactly the right person you need. So your leadership style will help you in determining what kind of leadership you can provide to a company. So my challenge to you is try to build out that true north compass. Try to figure out what your intrinsic and extrinsic motivations are. Try to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, just on a light jotting scale. And then look at the principles and values and ethical boundaries you have. And then just a quick question. Do you think you found your sweet spot? Do you think that you have an integrated life where you're living this true north all the time? Everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. I hope that you tell a friend about this podcast. It would help get more listeners to this podcast. And if you have anything you want to say to me, any comments you want to make, or you have ideas for a topic you'd like me to tackle, I'm Jill at smallstepspod.com. And remember that you can find your true north by taking small steps.